People talk a lot about 2-ply, 3-ply, 4-ply, XG+, XG++ analysis, doing rollouts and all kinds of stuff. Some people even say that computer is just not good, um, especially in back games and well, in some deep, deep, deep back ends where you've got like 10 checkers back, I agree that XG can't handle it, but otherwise, um, Everything what it suggests in a normal way is mostly correct in my opinion. Although here I would like to talk about this position, about this 4.3, where I play this on a mobile phone where the analysis is set just on a 2-ply. And on a 2-ply I got blundered here. I got really blundered like a hundred or something, maybe 80, I don't know. And well, then I just wanted to put it on the computer, I took a screenshot because it seemed like a very interesting position and I was kind of sure that my move is right, that's the problem. And then when I got dinged and, oh wow, Blunder 80, what did you do? Well, I was like, hmm, oh well, really? I mean, let me just put it to the computer and see if it's really a Blunder. And well, the result was that indeed on 2ply, my move was um, was like an 80 blunder close to, but once I analyzed it on, let's say, on plus, we can just do plus, I mean, even 3-ply already shows what the right decision is, by the way. On plus, the swing is huge, as the, the original correct move by 2-ply, by XG, is 84 blunder, actually. And well, this is the thing which um, where I just like to use the logic and what's the thinking behind the move, right? Like obviously I'm behind in a race by quite a lot. So if my I was thinking, let's if I play 13 to 6 and my opponent rolls a 6, right? Well, if he rolls 6-1, I'm getting a double shot, alright. Well, if I play this and he rolls 6-1, sure I'm gonna have two checkers on the bar, but I'm still having a double shot. If he rolls 6-2, well, that works either way, like he's hitting me two checkers, this way I play 13-6, he hits me one checker, so kind of the same way, you know. I've got a double shot here if he hits me, before I guess it would be kind of the same thing. 6-3, he's escaping, and so that's just bad anyways, right? Here, of course, he hits and covers, so again, that's just slightly worse for me as I can now lose a gammon, but 6-4, well, what do I prefer, if I if he rolls 6-4 in this case, on this or this case? Again, I mean, kinda probably the same thing, I mean, I don't even know, or maybe I know, I mean, I probably have a preference, slight preference for something, but the thing is, the deal is, it's not that big of a deal, right? Uh, but for sure, I know what I prefer with 6-5. With 6-5, if I play 13-6 and he just escapes all the way, uh, I just lost the game. If I've got this position and he rolls 6-5, well, I've still got a double shot, right? Uh, so, basically, what I was trying to point out is, if I do this or this and he rolls a 6, I, if I should say from the bigger picture, I just don't care. Okay, I mean, I'm not, I'm not that happy either way. I mean, I need to perform and I need to get lucky and I need to hit the double shot in order to win the game. Uh, although, what happens if he does not roll the 6? Well, if he does not roll the 6, let's say he rolls 3, 2, 2, 1, 5, 2, these kind of things, right? Well, how is my position now? I mean, if I play 13 to 6, I'm in a terrible shape, like what's this? Like, I mean, I've got no power, I can't even attack unless I roll a perfecto, I'm still behind in a race by a lot, I can't prime, what can I do? There's nothing to do. Well, if I play 13, 10, 13, 9, and he misses, I know that I'm making the 9 point, I know that I'm having a power, I know, I know that I'm having an initiative, and I just know that this has to be the right move, right? So, and well, it is the right move by quite a lot. But it's just interesting how in these, well, it's even a controversial, controversial play, right? It's a play which like divides everything. I mean, it's unusual. 
it's a little bit different, but we know. And I mean, I honestly, I don't think this is a tough place. So I'm sure you you probably find it as well. The thing what I'm trying to point is that is the difference. Like even in this position, it's um, it's nice that logic can uh, be better in some cases than two ply. I'm not saying that. I'm better than two ply, which I'm definitely not. Uh, just in display that the, if you are confident and if you are thinking straight and right, then you can find place and be confident about them. And that's what I like to teach and what I like to give away as well, is that if you are certain about some move and you can prove it's the right move, for example, as we just did, like um, we put it basically in two categories. When he rolls a six, when he doesn't roll a six. Uh, if he does roll a six, I'm unhappy anyway. I'm unhappy either way. Sure, I agree, I'm probably less unhappy if he rolls a six in this case, but I gain way more if he does not roll a six, which is more likely if I manage to make this move. So this is kind of an easy risk reward comparison which basically proves that this move has to be right. So uh, being dinged in the, in the two, from the two-ply analysis, I mean, it was, well, I just needed to check right away. But the thing is, this is again the mindset. Yeah, this is what you want to have. This is how you want to think. And I've been talking about this, I mean, discussing this in the book, the way how to think in the Ziska method as well as in all of the courses where I basically teach the right mindset and the right way of thinking. And this is just it. So I hope this is clear and I hope this gives some nice light to how you want to approach the game, what you want to be noticing and how you want to look at the position. I mean, it's not math. It's not, it's not difficult. It's just fun. It's logic. And the greatest part is we can, we can learn this. We can just get used to it and we can think in this way and be really confident in our moves. And I can tell you there is nothing better than to be confident in backhand game about making difficult and controversial moves like this. So I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I forget to tell you that, uh, that you should have stopped, uh, you should have paused the video if you wanted to if you wanted to uh, think about the move, but well, I hope you did before. So if you did, uh, please let me know how you, would, how you would have played this and what do you think about these kind of things. Uh, one last thing at the end, I really would like to say that I trust computer and that even in normal bad games, it's got great ideas. So I'm kind of on the side of the computer in many, many cases. Um, well, the fun thing is that last time I played a bad game was in the World Championship Monte Carlo, which most many of you probably know. And well, in that case, uh, computer couldn't have been right because that was the case I was talking about when I had like 10, 11 checkers back. Even though there were some controversial things where I was not sure, I uh, think the main one was leaving 24 point with the 5-4, but otherwise, I was so happy with the situation and I just thought that most of the moves didn't matter that much because they just allowed, I mean, they just wanted to be played from the bigger picture and from the longer term. So, so yeah, but I'll have some other discussion about that, I guess, later. So, hope you like this and I'll see you soon with some other, other news, other discussions similar to this. See you guys. Cheers.